Good evening, friends. My name is Jason Sisk-Provencio, and I'm the pastor at the United Church of Christ Congregational of San Obispo on Los Osos Valley Road, and I'm here with a Monday evening nighttime nugget, a little something to help us soothe our minds, our feelings, and prepare to uh, get some rest. And tonight I wanted to talk about prayer, and I found a great reading from Evelyn Underhill in this book, Devotional Classics, which was given to me by a friend many years ago. Uh, it's edited by Richard Foster, who wrote The Celebration of Discipline many years ago, and who used to teach at the seminary I attended. I wanted to talk about prayer this evening because I received an email from Dee and Letty in Santa Maria to let me know that their cousin Al, who I actually met, and he's a great guy, uh, Al is in the hospital right now. He went in because he had real bad stomach pains, and it turned out that he needed to have his appendix removed. And so that happened, and he's recovering. But a hospital is not a good place to be right now. And if I remember right, Al moved to the East Coast. Hi, Richard. So especially on the East Coast, being in a hospital right now, not good. I immediately began praying. So I thought tonight I would talk about prayer. And uh, Evelyn Underhill lived the majority of her life in the early part of the 20th century. She was English. She wrote a very popular book called Mysticism, a study in the nature and development of our spiritual consciousness, which is still being reprinted today. So um, I have not heard much about her, but when I read what she wrote, I thought this is perfect to read tonight as we are thinking about prayer and its importance and praying for friends including our friend Al. I see that Letty just joined us. Letty, we're praying for Al. So let me read what Evelyn Underhill said about prayer uh, and our feelings and our mind. She writes, Now, intellect and feeling are not wholly in our control. They fluctuate from day to day, from hour to hour, they are dependent on many delicate adjustments. Sometimes we are mentally dull. Amen. Sometimes we are emotionally flat. Amen. On such occasions, it is notoriously useless to try to beat ourselves up to a froth, to make ourselves think more deeply or make ourselves care more intensely. If the worth of our prayer life depended upon the maintenance of a constant high level of feeling or understanding, we would be in a dangerous place. Though these often seem to fail us, the reigning will remains. Even when our heart is cold and our mind is dim, prayer is still possible to us. Our wills are ours to make them thine. The, the determined fixing of our will upon God and pressing toward him steadily and without deflection. This is the very center and the art of prayer. The most theological of thoughts soon becomes inadequate. The most spiritual of emotions is only a fair weather breeze. Let the ship take advantage of it by all means, but not rely on it. She must be prepared to beat to windward if she would reach her goal. So, friends, God isn't bound to our feelings of uh, great spiritual depth or, or joy. Uh, God is bound to us by God's faithfulness, and God promised to be with us. God promised to always listen to us. God invited us to pray without ceasing, like Paul said, pray without ceasing. So we lift up Al tonight, and we lift up our loved ones, and any time 
Uh, if you wake up in the night, I have a friend, she said when she wakes up in the middle of the night and can't sleep, she prays for people. I think that's a, a good strategy right now. If you find yourself waking up, pray. Pray and trust that God is listening and God is taking action. All right, friends, I wish you grace and peace this evening. I wish that you get some good rest and have pleasant dreams and that you will all wake up refreshed tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Good night.